slash two plus two. Hey guys, thank you for joining our special live Q and A from our vacation right now in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. It's the very northern and west part of Idaho, next to Washington State. And Christina is actually going to join me for this video because my brother-in-law Justin is manning the camera. Say hi, Justin. He says thumbs up. And uh, so he's going to be getting to a couple questions that we got first from Instagram and um, from YouTube's community page. Again, if you want to follow me on Instagram at miles per hour, then you can get in those questions and subscribe. Subscribe and click the bell for notifications so you get the daily videos that I have for you, which you've seen have been going on continuously, even though I am, I am on vacation. So Christina's going to join me as we answer some of these questions and fire them over, and Justin will get to them after we get to these. What is our first question, Justin? All right, how is the Land Cruiser behaving after all these miles? Are you enjoying it? Says uh, Yvonne Chavez. Yes, all right. Yvonne asks how the Land Cruiser is behaving after all these miles and whether I'm enjoying it. I am definitely enjoying it, Christina. We have both been enjoying it. We've both been doing good sessions of driving, like long sessions, long sessions, long sessions of driving. And uh, you know, in a previous video, my 50,000 subscriber video, I showed off the Land Cruiser. Uh, but I'll quickly give you a refresh on the truck. It's a 1994 FCJ80 generation Land Cruiser, meaning it has the FCJ80 engine. It's an inline six cylinder, and it has four-wheel drive permanently. It's not a, a transfer, I mean, you can transfer case to the four-wheel four drive low, but it doesn't have a two-wheel drive only function. It's permanent four-wheel drive. And the uh, I've done a few modifications to the truck, tried to keep it as stock looking as possible. And so I've got little larger tires, 33 inch tires. I've got a two and a half inch suspension system from Dobinson's. And I've got some gear that you can see on the truck. And if anyone asks questions about the gear, I will get to that in this video. But all that to say, we have definitely enjoyed. We've gone from Southern California all the way up through the state of California to uh, Oregon. We bopped around in Oregon, Bend, and Portland. And then we were in Washington State seeing some of our friends in uh, the Issaquah and Maple Valley area. And then we've cut over to Coeur d'Alene where we're hanging out with our family and just having some fun. What, how, how have you experienced the Land Cruiser, Christina? What have you, been your thoughts? Um, it's been very comfortable. For the most part, it's really slow yeah. uh, uphill. Mm -hmm. So we have really honestly just been cruising around, uh, going like about the license plate yeah, says. 45, 50 miles up a hill. Yeah. That part's the only thing that's killing me. But other than that, it's been great. It so can, the fuel economy, has that, been a, has that been a struggle? No, lots of stops, but it's good for us to stretch our legs. Yes, that's true. So I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah, it is slow, but it's slow. It doesn't matter how much gear or how much it's towing. It's kind of just going to do the same speed. It's slow. Well, we have to show them our seats. Oh yeah, our, our cushy seats. Yeah. All right, Justin, let's come over and show them those. So you'll notice that the truck is absolutely filthy uh, outside and in. That's because we're using it and I've not had time to go wash it and I'm not going to go wash it until the end of this trip. These are some $25 cushions from uh, Costco memory foam. And let me tell you, without these, we would be completely different people in this video. We would, uh, first of all, not even do the video because we'd be so upset. But uh, they, we would just be so sort of irritated all the time. But these things have provided so much comfort. They look awful on the natural like herringbone uh, fabric seat covers that, that come from Toyota, but they work really, really well. So we got the lumbar support and we got the butt cushion support and the inside is clearly filthy and we have not, not touched it for this video. So you're seeing the real deal this is the raw. The raw stuff, guys. Uh, but great question, Yvonne. And we've loved our Land Cruiser. It's been slow. That's kind of the the only critique. What's next? All right. Are you planning to Are you planning to relocate to any of the places you're visiting? Oh, that's a good Did you question. love Crater Lake and then wonder what's next? Teresa Partington. Oh yes, <laughs> your aunt asked this question. Uh, awesome. It's a great question. Uh, we are not planning to relocate. We are going to stay in Southern California. We thought um, about it. Yeah, we did think about it, but uh, mostly we, we just wanted to see more. And uh, it, the trip, the whole, like, part, uh, the, the reason for this trip was so we could spend a lot of time together, and especially because Christina's pregnant, and uh, we just you don't wanted have to zoom in on that. <laughs> <laughs> zoom in, uh, she's pregnant, so uh, so we just wanted to spend some time together before the baby comes in January. So we got we got still more time 
uh, before then. But uh, we just wanted to spend some time together, get a little vacation from the, you know, all the videos that I've been making. Um, so I got ahead on the videos. So we can still have daily videos, but we want to spend some time together, and it's been great. Yes. So right. yes, Crater Lake was beautiful, and we did wonder what's next, but we've continued to see good things, Teresa. <laughs> Christine Rocco asked, "Where's Obi?" Where is Obi, our dog Obi, our Rhodesian Ridgeback pup? Uh, we were sad that we couldn't bring him on this trip. Honestly, if we had wanted to bring him, it would have been real tight back there with all the stuff we've had to bring. But we he's also- He's also huge. He's also massive. He's a big dog. He's a hundred pounds and just giant. When he stands up, he's like almost as tall as you've seen him. Um, but he, uh, he is at training right now while we are away so that when the baby comes, he's gonna be a little bit better around children and all that. Uh, but no, he's a sweet dog. We're just sad he wasn't be able to be here. But we've had a lot of fun, even without Obi. Sorry, Christine. Obi's not here. <laughs> Justin, do we have some questions coming in? We do, from the YouTube. The YouTube. Um, all right, so we just have a greeting from someone from Turkey. Oh, wow, uh, cool. Thanks watching for joining. Your video. Thank you. All right, let's see. We have a lot of highs and hellos. Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay, so uh, Muhayu Muninda, sorry if I butcher your name there. Do you have a 21st century vehicle? Do I have a 21st century vehicle? That's <laughs> a great fish. question. Uh, we do. No, your, no. your RAV4 it's, is from, yeah, that's true. she has a Toyota RAV4 from 2013, technically a 21st century vehicle. It's uh, pretty outdated. It is pretty outdated, but it works. It gets yeah. the job done. I wish we, I also have, well, my, my Miata is also a 20th century vehicle. Is it the 96, 95? I have a Miata, but that's a, that's a 96. So, um, Yes, her RAV4 is our 21st century vehicle. I would like to get another 21st century vehicle. If it was my money, I'd go get the Dodge Charger Scat Pack wide body, but uh, that's that's gonna be a little further down the road, but good question. All right, do you have a Saturday or Sunday car? Asked Joku. Ja yes, okay, so that actually, great question, Joku. Um, uh, this is actually a good time to say thank you for being uh, a contributor on Patreon Jaku oh, was, became, he is the uh, team manager now at that tier on Patreon, but thank you so much for being a contributor. I love um, that title. Yeah. Team manager. Team manager, yeah. Yeah, so you're a team manager. Oh, so Jaku is going to tell me at some point, when you get to that tier, you get to tell me what vehicle you want to see in a review or POV driver walk around. So Jaku is going to tell me what car he wants to see, uh, but mostly thank you so much for your support. And, uh, and I'm really glad you like the content that we're putting out and we'll keep doing it. So thank you so much, Jocky. Uh, but yeah, what did he ask? Sorry, what did he ask? I forgot. He asked about your Sunday. S Saturday, oh, Saturday, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday car. car. Yes. Um, no. No, because I used to have a Saturday or Sunday car. I had an E36 M3 for a few years and loved it to death. But I had to sell it because I just honestly didn't drive it. I review so many cars that my Saturday or Sunday car is always one of the cars I'm reviewing. And typically they're fun, so they are, you know, traditional Saturday, Sunday, enjoyable cruisers, but- uh, It's always new. It is always new. But this has actually been our Saturday, Sunday car lately because we've taken on camping trips. So Joseph Noba just says, uh, comments, watching from Par Paraguay. Awesome. Oh, LOL. I used to live there. Oh, Hi. there you go. Christina did live there. <laughs> uh, and then uh, by Ramov Phillips asks, where are you from? We are from uh, Southern California, from Orange County. Both of us, we went to school together growing up. We didn't date uh, in school or after school. Uh, but then I moved to Boston for college and to work after college. And then I moved back to California about six years ago. Yeah, Christina never left. California. California, yeah. I she left went, our small yeah, hometown. Yeah, she left our small, our hometown. Of Brea. Yeah. And I moved to Santa Barbara, yeah. where I lived there for 10 years. Cameron J asked, how much does it take to fill that big thing? Oh up? my gosh. <laughs> LOL. Yeah, good question. Uh, so first off, I've been averaging 11 to 11 and a half miles per hour with a decent amount of highway driving so far. The second half of this trip will be a lot more off-road and so the fuel economy is gonna be even worse. So 11 to 11 and a half miles per gallon, 25 gallon tank, it's expensive. Uh, it's been, about $75, depending on the state. So as we go through different states, the fuel prices change, but about $75 to fill this tank. And um, that's that's just thankful that we're not above $3 a gallon in, I think, all of the US. California, we get there, but yeah. yeah. So it's been expensive 
very expensive. And having to fill up as often as you do in a truck of this size sucks. That's why I've got some fuel, spare fuel tanks for when I go off road. They're gonna go up on the rack right now. I've got some firewood up there and a water jug. And uh, lots of dead bugs. Let's just, let's show how many bugs we've killed. Cause I cleaned the front end of the truck, but I mean, there is bug, bug murder up here. There's just so many dead bugs and they're all over the rack and all over the, uh, the, the wind deflector. Yeah, killed a lot of bugs. And my windshield got killed by a rock at some point. That was fun. So uh, yeah, the, earlier yesterday, I was following just a standard pickup truck and I guess he had been going off road. And so he chucked some rocks. Um, I don't, the driver didn't actually chuck, the, the truck chucked some rocks and uh, put a nice little pit in the win window. And so I'm gonna have to get safe light out here and they're gonna have to fix it. That's a nice expense I wasn't expecting. Then again, I should have. With the windshield, long road trip, something's gonna happen, but that was unfortunate. Uh, okay, what's the next question? Well, you have uh, quite a few comments. Let me get to those. And uh, let me scroll there. Uh, someone asks, well, someone just says, congratulations. Oh, thank, oh, thank you. you. And we have a, a few of those. Okay. Uh, Prothamesh. Ah, uh, Prothamesh Kawaskar. There we go. Every week. Says, are, <laughs> Loyal. You, are you into bikes? I am, I am into bikes. I rode for a mm, long motorcycles? time. Motorcycles? Motorcycles or bicycles. I'm now into bicycles, <laughs> uh, but I was into motorcycles for a long time. I rode for about 10 years and then I uh, got hit by a drunk driver and I no longer ride motorcycles because it's just, I'm just not willing to take the risk anymore. And I had a brain injury that I had to recover from. So, uh, so I just stay away from bikes. I love motorcycles. I just, I can't ride them anymore. Okay, I think that's all the questions. Uh... If that's all of them, then that's, that's cool. And I, I may just go into a little bit on the gear that we brought for this trip. Um, I don't know how much of it I will show you because it's, it's pretty filthy, but we, we have, uh, we have our awning for when we get off road and it's going to be really sunny. We've got the lights for when we're off road and it's at night. And these are really good lights from light force. And then we've got the rack from front runner. That's kind of attaching all of our gear. We've got a rooftop tent from roof nest. That's, uh, it's been good. I now just, you'll probably be able to see it when you step, step up on that curb. Maybe, I don't know, but it's really started to peel. All of the clear coat on top of it has started to peel. And so it just looked kind of terrible, which I, I'm not a huge fan of. And, and that's a bit of a bummer, but the functionality of the tent is very good. So we're happy with that. But aesthetically, I don't know what's happened. Just Showing a lot of time in the sun. Runner boxes. The front runner boxes. Oh yeah. So two new pieces of gear that we're testing out on this trip are these front runner boxes, these wolf pack boxes, they stack so neatly in here and they really maximize your storage space that you have. This is uh, not something we're reviewing. This is just a step ladder. This Dometic uh, CFX 75 VZW cooler, um, I got a, a little while ago and this has been such a big asset on our trips because it's got a freezer and a fridge. And so we've got sort of all sorts of meals and drinks and things in there. That's very uh, a good thing to have when we have an auxil auxiliary battery that's powering just the fridge. That's cool. And what else? I've got a, um, I haven't been able to, well, I can probably bust it out right now. The shower rack. So we're gonna be on the road for a while without getting a shower, which means that we're gonna have to, I didn't really close that, that's fine. This is how we're gonna shower up, just, just like that. Now, I've got a bar that attaches from Front Runner. Okay, this is just, hold on. Thank you, it's going well. So it's a shower arm that attaches up here. And then you have a hook that comes down from it. And then I'm going to drape this water jug up here, which just heats up in the sun. And then it tilts it upside down. It's got a nozzle and then that becomes our shower. So it's not the most exciting or long shower. They're gonna have to be kept to like a minute or two, but this is a very useful thing. And as you can see, it comes off really easily and stows very nicely. So this is a cool piece from Front Runner that I'm excited to test out along with those wolf pack boxes. And we also have been using a killer stove setup 
from Primus. We've got this six dough from Primus, and Primus is really known for a lot of their backpacking gear, but in this case, they have this really sweet, very lightweight two burner stove that we've been using and really enjoying. And it's got uh, you know built-in lighters, and so you don't need your matches or your, uh, your lighter to get it going. But it kicks on and it heats food up really fast, like frighteningly fast. We burned a couple burned things on there by accident else. because we're just like, oh, it's been a minute. It's fine. Nope, it's burned. So this thing has been really cool. And they've also given us some stoveware that we've been testing out as well. And we've been really happy with that stuff. They've got a sweet little kettle that weighs next to nothing. It's honestly, it's no wonder that they are the brand of backpackers because it doesn't weigh anything. We have a few more questions. More questions. Cool. What do you think about the new Mach 4 Mustang? The new Mach, the Mustang, um, Mach, Mach 1 Mustang, um, uh, it's, I don't know, it doesn't really excite me like the, the older Mach, Mach 1 Mustangs did. It, it seems more just like a package for the Mustang GT instead of like its own specialized thing. So I'm not really excited about that one, to be honest. I'd much rather go with the GT350 or the GT500, which I just got a chance to drive and that was fun. How? How much, how many more years will this last? This truck? Yes. Ah, good question. I think that because of the way we are using it, which is really just for our camping trips and road trips, I think if we take good care of it like we are doing, I know it doesn't look it, but we do take good care of it. Uh, you know, regular oil changes, changing the differential flu fluid, and uh, you know, changing the tires and just keeping it running very well and not messing too much with the stock stuff that Toyota did. Toyota really over-engineered this truck. It's gonna last for a very long time. And when the engine does go in a couple hundred, maybe even 300,000 miles more, it only has 134,000 miles on it. So it's a relatively fresh truck. Uh, but when the engine does go, the whole body's gonna be fine. So we'll just put in a new engine and it'll keep going. How many seats does it have? Ah, ours Five has, seven. Ours has two, uh, but that's because we ripped out the, well, didn't rip them out. We, we unbolted and removed the rear seats and I built this platform here so we could fit more stuff in there. Clearly, as I said, this is a very yeah, uh, well-organized rear end here uh, and to fit our dog. Yes, yeah, so our dog could have hop up there and have a, a nice flat place to lie. But typically there are another two seats back here and then two more seats, or maybe it's a three, three across. Yeah, so it's a five seater. So five and then two uh, jumper seats in the back that we also removed. So it can seat up to seven people. Uh, in our case, it only sits, seats two. That will change. That will change. As soon as we have a baby, that's going to change. Have you done half-roading? Ask Avi Ram. Half-roading. I don't know what that is. I've never heard that term. I, I'm imagining that half-roading is like not full-on off-roading. It's like fire roads and dirt roads and things like that, in which case, yes. But if you have a further explanation of what half-roading means, then I will answer that. Uh, Nilal asks, would you consider buying the new Bronco? Oh, man. Yes. Christina's all about it. Yes. She saw it. She was really happy I with want it. it. Yeah, she wants it. Well, we love, I mean, we love I the love Wrangler. The we love the Wrangler diesel. That would be, I don't know, would have been our first pick. But if they come out with a diesel engine for that, I mean, even if, even if they didn't, the new Bronco looks super cool. So yes, we would we would definitely consider getting the new Bronco. But this is our real, I mean, this is our off-road vehicle, so we'd have to have a, a use case for it. At this point, I would much rather get a sports car first. Oh. Yeah, you can get the Bronco too later. <laughs> later. Uh, two questions that you've sort of answered half of them. Uh, Four-wheel drive and do you use it for camping? Yes, uh, yes to both of those. Permanent four-wheel drive, so it doesn't have a two-wheel drive form. Always on four-wheel drive. And yes, we use it for camping. That's pretty much exclusively how we use this truck. We don't use it for commuting, so we don't have to suffer from 10 miles per gallon in the city. We just get to take it on camping trips. Typically they're local, but you know, for this trip, we're covering a lot of miles. We'll be covering, I didn't actually do the math on how many miles we're covering, but again, I mean, up 
the whole west coast, then over to Idaho, continue on to Montana. We're going to go to Glacier National Park, then down to Yellowstone, into Wyoming, and then through the Grand Tetons of Wyoming, over to Colorado, and then over to Utah, and then home. So we're doing a giant big loop thing there. So it's going to be a, a lot of miles on this truck. Ian Khan says, what's a better buy, a Camaro Z ZI1 Z or the Shelby GT350? Uh, the oh. ZL1 probably, um, or the Shelby GT350. I'm going to say GT350. That flat plane crank V8 is an amazing motor. It sounds so exotic, and that car I've taken on track and did incredibly well. The ZL1 is also a great track car, but for me, uh, I would rather trade some horses for the great driving experience both on and off road. So I'm going to say GT350. I'm glad people are asking all sorts of questions because I wanted this video to be not just about the Land Cruiser and about us, open. but but just open to uh, it's a special. It's it's I don't have a specific press car that I'm, t I'm covering here. So ask any questions you want. Okay. Jaku asks uh, any weird or scary moments in the trip. Mmm. Oh yeah. What was that? No, I guess not so far, which, which I mean, great. fingers crossed, uh, weird moments. It's a great question. We're just like, we've seen some interesting vehicles. I tried to throw them on Instagram. Another reason to follow me on Instagram is because we're, I'm sharing live updates of our trip as we're doing it, going about it, um, on, on my miles per hour account. But we saw some pretty interesting vehicles on the road that I tried to share via car spotting, but no real weird moments. It's been pretty. We did have to stay, uh, spent the night in the parking lot. That was fun. I mean, it was it was a recreation area. Uh, that was the only weird one. But that was kind of strange, because we had like that... there was a there was a cop that was like pacing around the whole area. And we're like, is something going on? He's like, <laughs> I no, I just do this. Something was wrong. We're like, oh, okay, so we we feel fine now. That's cool. He was just going for a walk. He was just going for a walk. I was like, should we be concerned? Yeah. Should yeah, he's like, him? he's all kitted out and he's just like, he looks very intent as he's walking around the parking lot. And Other than that, nothing nice. weird. No, nothing really no weird. No close calls in our Except car. for that rock. That rock was kind of annoying, but I that's it. I think we're going too slow to have close yeah. calls. Oh yeah, that's the thing. Like, there is no speeding that's happening here. We will never get a ticket except for maybe going too slow. But that's, that's the cruiser lifestyle, folks. What do you do for a living other than this channel? Uh, I am a freelance automotive journalist, and so I will, at 100,000 subscribers, I will go into much more detail about what I do, how I get the press cars that I get. This is not a press car, this is my car. Um, I will go into much more detail about how I get those cars and what I do at 100,000 subscribers. So let's get there. We're making great progress. We're at 65 something right now, so we're moving on along, but I will... Uh, 65,000. 65,000, sorry. Or 65 subscribers, yeah! 65,000 so uh, we're moving along but at 100,000 I'll give you I'll give you that much in-depth answer but short answer I'm an automotive journalist what do you think about the new 991.2 edition Porsche uh, so the the latest 911 I think it's great um, 911s are fantastic I I have not actually driven the new 911 so I need to get behind the wheel of one soon but I, I drove the 991.1 GT3 and that was awesome and they, Porsches typically just get better as they go along. They get, they become different, but they get better. So I, I, I've heard very good things from my colleagues about the 991.2. Wannabe photographer asks, would you want a 5.0 in the new Bronco? Oh yeah, who wouldn't? That'd be awesome. That'd be really cool. And I mean, yes, I know they'd be doing a lot with their EcoBoost engines, you know, the turbocharged fours and sixes and all that. But uh, I think a 5.0 would be amazing in there. They, I wouldn't be surprised if they did one of those, especially because Ford is like consolidating all of their car stuff. So they just have a Mustang and they're just gonna add the SUVs. So why not use their you know, higher displacement V8 engines in their SUV products? Uh, Durango Hellcat or Explorer ST? Oh. Ask Muhammad Aziz. It's a good question. I mean, I clearly haven't driven the Durango Hellcat, but I love, I love Dodge vehicles uh, just be, for their brashness. So I would say, and it makes significantly more power than the Explorer ST. So I'd probably go with that. What's your favorite car? Asked George Ibrahim. You get that a lot? I do get that a lot. Uh, so- Ford GT? Yes, Christina knows. The, the Ford GT- <laughs> Or the McLaren. 
Not the latest Ford GT. I like the 2005 version. Or the McLaren 700 LT, is that it? 675 LT. 675 He's getting LT. close. 675 LT. Yeah, that's yeah. That, that's, that's my favorite one that I've driven. Press yes. car driven. But just in general, favorite car, 2005 Ford GT. That's me. Why did Saab go out of business? It's because the 9-3 is my dream car. Oh, that's a great question. ABM it's more of a rhetorical years. question because it's... It's just like, oh, why? Why did Saab go out of business? They're such a fun, quirky uh, Swedish automaker. And yeah, it's sad that they went out. But the 93 uh, Turbo, such a cool car. All right. Uh, is the swap culture as intense as described in the memes in America? Asked Prothamesh uh, Pawaska. Uh, like swapping engines, perhaps? I'm not sure, Prothamesh. I'm not sure what you mean specifically. I've not heard of swap culture. Uh, Want to be photographer asked, what would you think would be a good first car? Oh, good oh, first car. What's your budget? Yeah, there you go. Good question. Uh, yeah, what is your budget? But I, I mean, still, a, a good first car is going to be something that's safe, something that I, ideally it would be really cool if you could get a manual as a first car, because if you can learn it early on, it just becomes native to you. Uh, and this is, this is coming from America, where manuals are not as common. Um, I know elsewhere in the world uh, that manuals are kind of the, 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 the main form of vehicle transmissions, but here in the U.S. they're not as common, um, but they are in some very good enthusiast vehicles. So if your first car can be a manual transmission car, um, I know Will Long, who's a follower on Instagram and on YouTube, has told me that he's learning manual on an old BMW X5, and I think that's really mm -hmm. cool. So I think that's a, that's a great first car, or something, you know, something that's safe, but also with a manual would be pretty cool. When you get the scat, will you keep it stock? Oh, yes. Uh, that when you get it. Yeah, when I get it. I, I, I'll be... probably keep it stock. I don't know what, anything. I mean, the thing about the Charger scat pack and really just all of Dodge vehicles, the Charger and, and Challenger, um, are that they are done very well from the factory. So they don't immediately need modifications. I've seen some very bad modifications done to them. and. Those cars are so loud from the factory that they don't need to be louder, in my opinion. And um, yeah, I think I'd probably keep it stock. I would. Done very well right from the factory. What's been on your playlist? Okay. Um, on our playlist, we've been listening to. <laughs> no playlist. No, actually. no playlist, actually. We've just been listening to books on, uh, books on Audible, books on tape. I almost said books on tape. This is where wow. we. Not that Dive, or reveal that we are nerds. Yeah. And we are listening to Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, yeah. Listening to Lord of the Rings on Audible. It's great. <laughs> Don't hate. It's great. What do you think of the new Mercedes GT Black Series? I uh, think it's love, by the way. Uh, you what? I think it's love, by the way. That's that's the name. That's their name? Cool. No, uh, no, no that's, not, that's Prathamesh uh, Pawaskar. Oh, Prathamesh is asking about... Okay, so the Mercedes AMG GT... Black Series uh, looks pretty awesome. It doesn't look as cool as the SLS Black Series, so kind of the previous generation of Mercedes AMG's Halo car, but I think it looks pretty cool. And uh, the specs that it's throwing down, I think it's going to be amazing on a racetrack. I really want to drive that one. Uh, Muhammad Aziz asks P1 or La Ferrari? Mm, interesting. So at this point, those cars are kind of like the last generation of the ultimate, uh, ultimate super hypercars. So Oh, man. I'm going to say LaFerrari. Uh, Abhi Ram says, uh, asked when, I'm guessing, is the Aston Martin DBX review? Will that be seen? Oh, man, I'm hoping to get that. So Aston Martin's been pretty tight with how they're getting those cars out. I don't think anyone in the U.S. has driven that car. There have been some people in, um, in Europe who have driven it. Now their media loans are starting for that vehicle. So I, I hope to get it soon, but I can't promise you when exactly. All right, Muhammad Aziz uh, asks, best off-roader on budget, help us. Mm. Honestly, I've seen a lot of people, a friend, Jeff Glucker, um, has been driving the, why, why can I not, not, not a Suzu Trooper, the Mitsubishi. Montero? Montero, thank you, Christina. She's clutch right now. Uh, the Mitsubishi Montero is, is really undervalued right now, 
and yet it's very capable off-road. This one, the Land Cruisers of this, this generation have started to become more and more expensive. So I got this right before the prices started going up. Bought it like three or four years ago. And, um, but the Montero, the prices haven't gone up yet. So you can get them for the two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000 with not too many miles on them. And they're very capable out of the box. What time is it in the U.S.? In Japan, it's 2.34 a.m. Oh my gosh, you're oh, watching this 2.34 a.m. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Yeah, their name is in Japanese characters, so I, I can't read it. Okay, we're in, uh, well, we're in Idaho right now, and the time is uh, 10... 34. 10.34. So, I, yes, 10.34 a.m. Because we, we shouldn't have to oh, do the Oh, that's a trooper. There you go, there's, an, there's, there's there. an Isuzu trooper right there. But that's not a Montero. It's not a Montero, but that's an Isuzu trooper. Decent off-road vehicle. The only problem with the Trooper and the um, Montero. Montero, thank you, Christina, is that they won't have quite as much cargo space as a Land Cruiser will have. But, but they this, may not need it. They may not need it, correct. What are your views about American V8 versus European V8s, asked the Heliotrope. They're both wonderful. They're so good and, and so distinctive and unique uh, in terms of how the character of the engine, how they rev, the noises they make, um, typically like you know, a Ferrari V8 versus, uh, you know, a Mustang V8 is going to be very different, except that now with the 350, it's got the flat plane crank, so similar to the Ferrari engines, but they, they're both wonderful, both distinctive, and, um, and I love them both. Can I do that? Can I love them both? I, I think so. Justin thinks so. <laughs> That's all that matters. Have you driven any Morgans? I've not driven a Morgan. That's a great question. I really want to drive a Morgan three-wheeler or, you know, a different model. That would be fine. But I really want to drive a Morgan. I also have not driven a Lotus. That needs to happen soon. I can make that happen, uh, I think. I just uh, haven't gotten around to it. It's been quite busy. Favorite music genre? Ask K. Uh, alternative. Yeah, alternative. That's his. Alternative rock. Yeah, for sure. What about yours? Favorite genre? Yeah. I guess alternative now, because that's all we listen to. Yeah, we're going to be, uh, <laughs> we'll be really getting into the annoying baby music that's going to be coming in uh, about six you months. You better not think it's annoying. I know. Well, I'm going to start be start thinking it's annoying after we listen to it every day, all day. But it's going to be great. Songs. Kids yeah. music. Yeah. Yeah. You like this one, I think. When can you drive a Miata? When can I drive Miata? As soon as I get home, because I could go drive mine. No, mine is not street legal as a track car, so I can't drive my Miata when I get, when I get home. But uh, I drove the 2019. Uh, Miata, so you know the newer engine, the updated engine with 181 horsepower. I drove that very recently. I have a walk around and a POV drive, or not POV drive. I just have a drive video of that of that Miata. So I drove one recently. I will probably drive one again in the next year or so. What do you think about donks? Donks. Oh yes, those oh, those, like, cars, those cars, those cars. Uh, they're they're just like they like lower and they they raise. They like bop up and down with the air suspension. Yeah, it's not my personal thing, but every, there's there are little niches in the car culture world that I love that people are excited about them. So if donks are your thing, donk on. I was just... Donk on. I was going to say that. Scream too. it from the mountain types. Donk, donk on. Oh, no. Yeah. Make All right. it stop. Yeah. What is, <laughs> what, what is the rarest car you have driven? Ask uh, Akhilesh Kumar KR. Oh, interesting. Rarest car. Because I'm going to say most expensive is the Bugatti Chiron, and it is very rare. Is it the rarest car I've driven? No, I've driven a couple one-off vehicles. Well, okay, rarest car I drove was the Nissan GTR 50. Rarest car I drove. What about the new Ford Bronco? Can it be Jeep? And Can there's it... a lot of hand sanitizer and hearts. Interesting. Can hand it... sanitizer. <laughs> what know. was that? I don't know. The new Bronco, I think it's going to really take it to Jeep because Jeep has just owned this segment for so long and the Bronco is coming in with some really fresh ideas and hand sanitizer, apparently. So I think it's going to be an interesting showdown. I think they'll do very well in the marketplace. Uh, Prakamesh asks, uh, noise-wise, Porsche or SLS? Oh, uh, okay, <laughs> if it's the 99, like, you know, flat, flat, sorry, flat six Porsches, which they're all still flat sixes, but as they begin turbocharging them, I don't think they sound as good. So a pre-turbocharged uh, Porsche sounds pretty amazing. The SLS sounds also very good. Uh, 
Do I have to pick one? I'm gonna say flat six. So like, uh, my mom has a Porsche 993 generation 911, and I think it sounds fantastic. Love that car. We're probably gonna wrap up here as uh, as we're on vacation and we need to go vacation. So uh, so thank you guys so much for joining us. Yeah, we need coffee. Thank you for joining us. And um, thanks so much. Yeah, thank you for being a part of this channel. We're really excited about getting it going. And oh, uh, have we ever started up the Land Cruiser on the video? I don't think so. I'm gonna start it up. Just can't get the keys are done. They're in there. This could be very exciting, guys. Do you want me to be by the engine or by inside the cab? Uh, be no, just be by the back. Behind. I'll right. grab it. If I can find the keys. Found the keys. engine. Alright guys, we'll end it there. Thank you so much for joining us. Follow me on Instagram and uh, let's get to 100,000 subscribers so I can make that yeah. cool video. <laughs> you see, it's got to figure out how to turn it off. <laughs>